and he does this all this recording in his studio. When you watch him play that keyboard, it's almost done. I mean, I've seen it with Frankie, but when he does it on his show, he has the freedom to go all, all different ways. Robbie Roberts, if you're watching, there's only one of you. Never to be another. You're incredible. Hello out there in Jam and Java land and welcome, as George says, or as Bob Steed says, good evening to all of the jammers, to all, a pleasant good evening to you wherever you may be, as my hero Vin Scully used to say. Uh, of course, uh, I'm wearing this for a reason, because tis the season. Baseball, the Dodgers started spring training this week, and so... Uh, Spring is in the air. Baseball is rocking and rolling, and uh, everything is good in the world. Charlotte Clayton, hello, everyone, to you. Hello, George. Hello, Bob Sneed from Litchfield. Hello, Anthony. Uh, great to see you guys. Jennifer, Senior B, hello there, Senior B. Uh, it's the spring training jam in Java. Yes, that's right. Uh, who else? Char, I said hi. Bart Lanzen, hello there, Bert. Hello, Anna Samanamu. Um, Char, George, Anthony, Jennifer Green, hello, Ruth Holiday, Michael Crosby, hello, uh, hello, hello, Larry Visaki in the house. All right. Uh, and hello, KP Lynn. Thank you again for all of those amazing articles. You are very talented and very prolific, and we sure appreciate everything you do. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Myrna. And Barbara, how are you? So, uh, going to be an interesting evening tonight um uh coming live from new york city uh is my buddy paul cartier who is the organist for the yankees we're going to talk to him about spring training and how he gets rolling uh as my um as the promo said this week we uh i'm home <laughs> I've been home for a while, and we're going to be home until March 22nd is our next gig. And that's at Radio City Music Hall. Nice little gig. Uh, but uh, it's this is a pretty big block of time that we're not touring. Uh, we're definitely working every day, and uh, but it's definitely kind of home alone and uh, hanging out and making music. And um, I've been spending a lot of time, as you probably know, uh, on... Uh, Robbie's records and getting a lot of that rolling. And so we're going to be talking a lot about that tonight. Uh, we've got a new website. We've got the mailing, uh, the email list now started and all that kind of stuff. Um, hello, John Fletcher, another buddy of mine from Litchfield. He's one of the, uh, one of the guys who's made that trip on Route 66 from Chicago to L.A., um, so, uh, let's get this ball rolling because we got a lot of things in store and I'm going to bring in pastor Chuck Pearson. He is the resident chaplain of jam and Java to lead us in prayer and lead us in devotion and take it away. Pastor Chuck. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you've had a really great day. Uh, one of the lessons for yesterday was from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It's one of those lessons in which Paul uh, really clarifies what uh, what it means to belong to Jesus Christ. And I think it's one of those lessons that uh, it's important for us to share from time to time. I want to share verses 6 through 11 uh, with you. St. Paul writes, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom 
we have now received reconciliation. There are three phrases here which uh, nobody, none of us, nobody wants to have uh, labeled on us or, or put on us. Uh, three things. Uh, we were powerless while we were still powerless, while we were still sinners, and worst of all, while we were God's enemies. Uh, none of us likes to think of ourselves in those terms. Uh, nobody wants to be called powerless, especially in this day and age where we think the power of positive thinking and all of that. We can do anything that we set our minds to or uh no one likes to be called a sinner. I mean, after all, uh, we like to believe that everybody has a bit of good in them. And sinners are only those really bad people who, who commit murders and bank robberies and that kind of thing. And we certainly don't want to be called God's enemy. Uh, even the atheist or the agnostic might say, well, I don't care about God. I'm, I'm not his enemy. I'm just indifferent to him. I don't care about him. Um, and that's that's one of the things that uh, people want in our society. They just want to be left alone. They don't want God messing up in their, their life. Uh, somebody uh, once said that the opposite of love is not hatred, but indifference. And that uh, seems to be uh, one of the areas where our, our society is, and the world for that matter, uh, really is um, tuned in. Uh, we are not God's enemy so much, we're just indifferent. But the reality is that because of that, we are his enemies. What St. Paul is saying is this, is that by our nature, as we stand before God, uh, this is what we are. We're powerless before him, we are sinners before him, and we are his enemies. But, and this is the important part, this is not the complete picture. He goes on to say, uh, while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. So Paul draws what you might call a contrasting picture, what we were before with what we are now as we stand before God in terms of our relationship to him because of our faith. Uh, this is what you and I are. Uh, we were powerless, but we no longer are because we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, we were not, we were sinners, and even though there is that sin in, in us, we are reconciled to God. We were God's enemies, but that didn't stop God from loving us. And through the death of his son, Jesus Christ, who was our substitute, we have been reconciled to him. The hostilities have stopped. The relationship has been renewed and restored. That's what this Lenten season is all about. Uh, we never have been, we never will be everything that we are supposed to be before God by our human nature. But God didn't stop. Uh, God did, that didn't stop God, is what I'm trying to say, from um, loving us. He didn't say to us, get your act together, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, start doing all this stuff I want you to do. No, instead, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who gave up his life as a ransom for us, who took upon himself our burden and uh, suffered and died the death that we should have died. And then what God has done is given us the gift of faith. And through that faith, we are no longer powerless. And even though we are sinners, we're still reconciled. And But we are no longer the ungodly. We are no longer God's enemies. And having been, having been reconciled to God by the death of his son, Jesus Christ, we are also saved. Saved by his resurrection. Saved by his death. Saved by his resurrection. And the promise is that we will now live forever with him. In the New Testament, uh, when the apostles were asked what they needed, what someone needed to do in order to be saved, they weren't told, uh, uh, given a long list of demands, they weren't living the, given a long list of, of tasks and things they had to do. They were simply told, repent and believe. Or as St. Paul says it in Romans 5, if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? 
Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We are reconciled and we are his. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the good news of your love for us and the fact that you have already done everything that's necessary for our salvation just sounds too good to be true. Such love seems impossible. To our minds, there has to be something else. There has to be some kind of trick. It's just too simple. We don't like to think of ourselves as powerless or sinners or your enemies. And thankfully, through the gift of faith you have given us through the work of your Holy Spirit, that's no longer our status before you. Because of what you have done for us, we are reconciled to you through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are yours and we belong to you. Help us to understand the completeness of the salvation you have given us through our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, and help us to live in the confidence that we are no longer powerless or your enemies, but rather we are your we are redeemed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, back to you, Robbie. Have a great evening, everyone. Uh, and just uh, let's just celebrate everything God's done for us. Good night. your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dad's away from the cross. singing the old uh, contemporary Christian song from back in the day called, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. So uh, let's see. We've got so much to get into here tonight. 
Let's see here. First, I want to, uh, well, let's talk about Lent because uh, we are in the season of Lent, and we've been having our Wednesday night services, which are have been really uh, very um, meditative, very thoughtful, very uh, um, uh, uh, solemn services. We've been, and it's been really, really good. Debbie says, uh, one, one of the first songs I learned 15 years ago or so when I started singing with praise bands. Yes, that's, and that song even is older than that. That song's got to be 35 years old or something like that. Um, and uh, that, of course, and that was uh, our Trinity Praise Team. And as you probably know, I am the music, the minister of music at Trinity Lutheran Church, Simi Valley, California. And our tr- services are uh, every Sunday morning uh, and live streamed. Uh, that's how you go to them, and they're also WSMI Radio in Litchfield, my home, my beloved hometown. Hey, Steve Vaccaro from uh, Chapters Rap and from uh, Reach Out with Ray, Steve, Ray and Steve and Robbie, and uh, we're going to be getting that kind of rolling. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, a, f- a few years ago, uh, I have a... Well, my dear friend, Ray Negron from the New York Yankees. You guys all, if you watch this at all, you know, uh, Ray Negron is my friend. He's been with the Yankees literally for 50 years. This is the 50th anniversary with the Yankees on a ver- in a variety of uh, roles with the Yankees. And um, he's, he's, he introduced me to a, a, the organist for the New York Yankees. And a while back, they... Uh, uh, sent me a little shout out and I'm going to, I thought I would set this up here. Let's see if I can find that thing here. Looking at the right. Okay. Well, I had it here. Where did it go? Well, maybe we don't have it. It's not there. Bear with me. I do want to set this up, but maybe I won't. Well, I don't see it. So, that being said, let's, uh, well, you know, sitting in the green room in the lovely studios of RR Music, of the Jam and Java Studios here, he's eating all the green M&Ms, I'm sure, uh, is the New York Yankees organist. He plays the Mighty Hammond organ, in New York, and his name is Mr. Paul Cartier, and I want you to give him a nice big round of applause, everybody. Welcome, Mr. Paul Cartier. Hey, brother. Hi, brother. Look at that. How are you? Sounds like you're in Yankee Stadium there. How you doing, man? I, I quick, like I'll it. throw on my uh, my New York Yankee shirt since you have you your Dodgers shirt. Do on. that, of course you do. And it's so. First question for you, my friend. Well, by the way, again, Paul is the organist for the New York Yankees. How long have you been uh, the organist for the Yankees, Paul? I just finished up my twentieth season. This will be twenty-one. Wow, very cool. So, what do you do? In preparation, now spring training has started, and they're in Tampa. I know the Yankees train in Tampa. I'm assuming you're still in. <laughs> I see a Sarah Nimitz sign there. I better take that. You're not Sarah Nimitz, are you? How about that? Um, She's I'm assuming you're uh, you're not going to Tampa. Is that right? No, I have no plans to go down. Okay. Oh, well, I, I just was told here. I'm not on the screen. Now I'm on the screen, I think. There we go. Yeah, you are. Yeah, there we get. Oh, we got the Dodgers and Yankees, just like the World Series is going to be this year. We keep saying that. <laughs> I know, and it's been since 1981 that that happened, right? Yep, it's due. But I tell you what, this. So let's talk about the team. Well, I'm sorry. So let me back up. What are you uh, doing to prepare for the season? When you've been doing it this long, is is not a whole lot. Um, actually, just last week, I started uh, going through some of the uh, Billboard Top 40, oh, <laughs> seeing yeah. if there's anything that I can uh, relate to Oregon. As you know, much of the stuff today is not 
too easy to relate onto an organ, but there's there's still there's some. So uh, I start working on that now. The thing I find today is that all that kind of music, though the popular stuff, it, it ages out pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but I still have all our, uh, you know, organ standards, I guess, that we played there for years. And, uh, you know, I remember as a kid going into the ballpark, you know, and <clears throat> seeing all the green grass and then hearing the organ. And, and that was it. I always made sure I got there early just to listen to the organist. So, oh, wow. Uh, I was pretty lucky. We had a couple of really good people here in New York with Eddie Layton with the Yankees and Jane Jarvis with the Mets. So. And to speak of Eddie Layton in particular, uh, for those of you who are not in the know in that respect, Eddie Layton is literally a legend when it comes to ballpark organ, right? Absolutely. And you were it's friends with him, which is tell. cool. Tell them how yes. you got started with the Yankees and Eddie Layton. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Eddie Layton, uh, he also did the Islanders. I don't know if we've mentioned I do the New York Islanders in, in the NHL. Uh -huh. And so, actually, I, going all the way back, I was playing from 1979 to 85 with the Islanders, which is the year they won four cups, so the years they won four cups in a row. Wow. And then, um, and it was just organ and PA. There was no recorded music at the time. Uh -huh. In 85, they started to bring in all the entertainment portion. And the Islanders hired a, a gentleman from uh, Art Adler, his name was, uh, from the Yankees. And the first thing he did was bring in Eddie Layton to replace me. Oh, so wow. here I was. I was about uh, 23, 24 years old. I got replaced by Eddie Layton. So wow. I guess I really couldn't complain about that, right? So, oh, But from there, I got to meet him and got to know him. Uh -huh. You know, so we built a friendship over the years and um, and then all the guys that do the scoreboard and the entertainment, they, they all know each other. And, and here in New York, it's saturated. Right. We have uh, well, we, at the time we had the Nassau Coliseum and you had Madison Square Garden and you had the, the Meadowlands. And, you know, we're very spoiled because in other parts of the country, people drive hours to go see a professional sporting event yeah. and we can do it with, you know, a half an hour Well, with traffic around here. It could still be two hours, but uh, I, um, I can relate to that out here as well. Yeah. Right. So, so the guy who did Yankee stadium a fellow by the name of Mike Bonner was in charge of their whole setup. And in the off seasons, these guys would come and do things, for other teams, just for like he'd come and do DJ stuff at Islander games. Oh, for him, that was fun. He wasn't in charge. And uh, he told me, uh, I guess I saw him. This was after Eddie Layton had uh, announced he was retiring. Uh -huh. um, and he looked at me, he goes, we need to talk. And I was like, why? Because to be honest, I was an air traffic controller full time. Uh -huh. So he said, we need to talk. Re Layton retired. And I'm like. I have a full-time job. I don't know how I could possibly do a full baseball season. But so that's how that all came to be. Um, they had some auditions. He still wanted me to play. So he suggested if I could do Monday through Friday. And I was already kind of kicking myself, but I get, certainly the air traffic job was the bread and butter, you know? Yeah. So uh, I said yes. And I did uh, Monday through Friday for like the last 11 years, I think it was, as being an air traffic controller. So it was like double shifting every day. But it was too too good a gig to give up, you know. So anyway, he did have me audition for uh, for Eddie. And it was a cold fr uh, February day because you were in glass, but you were still outside. There was snow on the ground at Yankee Stadium. So were and you Eddie nervous to play for Eddie Layton? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, but he, he stood behind me and he just said, all right, play this, do the anthem, do the Canadian anthem, do happy birthday, do, you know, all simple stuff, but still he wanted it off the cuff, you know, and then had you play a couple of songs of your own choice. And um, he put his hand on my shoulder. He says, you're the guy. Wow. I mean, the uh, I couldn't believe it. Like, there was no, no discussion. You know, I mean, he just say, I was like, did he just say that? So, uh, so that was that's, that. And uh, it's been, cool. it's uh, 21 years later and I see the Islanders I've been with, this is my 27th season. Wow. And you probably see me looking up at one, every once in a while because they're in overtime. <laughs> I'm wow. watching this. They're down in Dallas. So gotcha. keep wow. an eye on the score there. By the way, in Tampa, while the Yankees are spring training, do they have an organist there at the stadium there or? 
Um, I don't think so. Uh, I know years back when I first started, I went down for a few um, spring trainings and there was a keyboard there and I jumped on that a couple of uh -huh. times. But I watched the game, uh, first game that was on TV yesterday and when they did the seventh inning stretch, it was it was just my recording. How did the how's the team look to you? I mean, they really are a good team this year. The Yankees on paper always look great. Yeah. I mean, they added Juan Soto. I know, you know? it's but amazing. The problem with any one of these teams is can they stay healthy? Yeah, you know they were decimated last year, you know, and and didn't have a good year as far as Yankee standards would go. Oh, but no. right now, I mean, it certainly would look like uh, as you say, you know, Yankees Dodgers World Series would seem in the making, but. We have to see how, you know, how they're going to stay healthy. And and you also know we've seen at times it just doesn't even make a difference how much money you spend. It's it's the chemistry of the team and, and how that all goes together, too. So I heard a pundit today say, because, you know, the, the Yankees have always been known as the evil empire because they, are the you know, was starting with George Steinbrenner. He would buy the teams, you know, and get the best players in the world, put them in a great team. And they were always on top, and you could I'm gonna go even go back to the Babe Ruth days where they were the <laughs> they were the best team. But the guy said today he says no longer the Yankees are the evil empire. The Dodgers you are <laughs> because, the Dodgers are I know. because they spent all this money over a billion dollars on three players. It's crazy. It's crazy. Who would think? I remember the Mets when they signed Mike Piazza all those years ago, right. and they. Uh, for $13 million and yeah. people were up in arms. When is it going to stop? Well, it hasn't. <laughs> it hasn't. Yeah. $13 million would get you just a media, a mediocre player these days. Right. Today though, it would be a bargain. You know, <laughs> right. so the Yankees are still looking to, to add to their pitching too. So we'll see how that's going to go. Anna says to you, hearing the Oregon play at Yankee Stadium is the best part of baseball season. So thank you, Paul Cartier. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I Another question somebody brought up, and I don't know the answer. I wonder if you know, who was the organist with the Brooklyn Dodgers? Gladys Gooding. Gladys Gooding. Okay, see, right? You know your stuff. I should know and that. And there's too, recordings right? out there of Gladys Gooding, too. She also played at Madison Square Garden wow. before Eddie Lee. Wow. I mean, if you really go back, New York is obviously one of those sports capitals of the world still but back in the in the 50s you had the dodgers you had the giants and the yankees willie mickey and the duke all playing in new york pretty amazing yeah imagine that <laughs> you know it's it's crazy but uh i enjoy it uh, i mean what who wouldn't you know i'm now retired as an air traffic controller and my mm -hmm. my job is to either go to the stadium or the arena so i feel i'm pretty blessed <laughs> So Debbie Grable says, so we have a diehard Dodger and Yankee fans in the house tonight, but I have to say, and there are also a new lifelong diehard Met fans too. Love, love, love hearing the organ at ball games and so miss the organ from Shea Stadium. Love meeting Paul Cartier and hearing his story tonight and just to make and just might have to make a trip to Yankee Stadium to hear you play, brother. Uh, thank you. You know, there's a little known story behind me in the fact that my father worked for Mrs. Joan Payson, who was the original owner of the Mets. Oh, wow. So she, uh, you know, he used to come home. I was like 10, 11, and he would um, say, we're going to the ball game. He never gave me an up, you know, a heads up that we were doing that. And I used to sit on the dugout on the rail in the owner's box. I had no idea what I had at that point that the players would come down and as they go to go into the dugout, they'd see a kid in the owner's box and they would offer me their autograph. So I kind of thought that's how it worked until later on in life. I realized that's not at all how it works. But oh, that's uh, funny. So uh, you're excited to get rolling with it, I guess. Now, uh, when will the hockey season be, be over then? But the season on both ends overlap mm -hmm. by a week, unless one of them make uh, the playoffs. So the first, it's usually the first week of October. I think they, the, the NHL may go another week this year or so. I do have one conflict, but I have our weekend organist, Ed Alstrom, yes. who uh, 
is usually fill, we we fill in for each other if we need to. So he's so already that's really uh, good for you guys well. that you have the two of you don't to cover it if you need to, if you need to. Well, you know, people, I've actually missed playoff uh, playoff baseball to do an exhibition hockey game, okay. but it's because we have two live organists. Yeah, you know, so if I didn't do that, the Islanders wouldn't have a live organist. I'm the only one who does them then it really becomes like a, de- a business decision at that point. You know, sure. you want to make sure both teams have live uh, music. So, um, so, uh, oh, oh gosh, what was I going to ask you here? How's up? Have you seen Ray Negron at all? Or do you only, you only see him during the season? Our buddy. No, I only, uh, I only see him during the season. Unless you guys come out to play here on the Island, I might run into him then. Oh yeah. Uh, well, we're, I, I, we do. I think right. we're coming back to Westbury. City, Radio City, right? We're going to Radio City in, in next month, but we are coming back to Westbury too. So oh, that's like ten minutes from here. Oh yeah, fantastic! But it's a small venue. Yeah, Larry Vasaki says Yankees for the game, Patsy's after the game. <laughs> you and I went to yeah. Patsy's, didn't we? That was fun. That's what we did. That was terrific. <laughs> that was great. That's one of my one of my top ten days. Well, you, I mean, you were so gracious to let me play that organ, the mighty Hammond organ at Yankee Stadium, and it was a memorable memorable time for me. I will never, ever forget it, my friend. It was fun to be part of that with you. Are you playing at your church still? Oh, yes. So do you guys do now? I play a Wednesday night uh, Lenten service. Do you have uh, Lent services? What night? Tuesday here. Oh, We do Tuesday. I'll be there tomorrow night. Basically. Yeah, and I do every Sunday. I do three masses on Sundays. Uh-huh. So you're a busy boy. Actually, church. I had to think this out. Eve of my eleventh birthday, I started, and the Islanders just won in overtime. Oh, um, good! Congratulations. Eve, Eve of my eleventh birthday, I started. So I've been doing uh, church for fifty-four years. Wow! Wow! At the same church, by the way. Is it been the same uh, church? No, I danced a couple. One I was at for thirty-four years. Uh-huh. This particular church, it's all it's all been Catholic churches. Uh, uh-huh. This church I'm at for four years, and today was actually kind of a treat. Uh, I mean, it was a funeral, so I mean that sounds weird, but it happened to be the mother of the organist who is the music director for the Archdiocese of Boston. Wow. So he, he came down and he played for his mother's uh, funeral, and uh, it was quite a treat to listen to him. Wow, uh, he, he, blew, he blew the dust off a lot of the pipes I don't use. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you have a pipe organ. At our church, we have an electronic. Well, I have two organs. One is a Hammond organ. Of course, i got to have a Hammond organ for my contemporary service. For the traditional service, we have an electronic organ there. An, uh, yeah, a lot of the churches, you know, I mean, it's a major commitment for oh, a pipe man. organ. Yeah. The the maintenance is is a lot, you know. So, and and if you get any major repairs, that that adds to it. So, uh, it's really important to keep up. You know, we have it looked over twice a year, obviously between East, before Easter and Christmas. We have it tuned and make sure everything's operating good. It was just re uh, rebuilt basically four or five years ago, just before I got there. So, wow. it's a uh, it's, I feel very honored to be able to play that. It's great. Um, well, another uh, question for you is, um, is uh, well, uh, what, where did it go here? I, I lost it now. <laughs> so sorry. But, Listen, uh, I can totally understand that. <laughs> yeah, too many fish in the, in the frying pan here today. Um, I so appreciate you coming on board. And uh, I'm going to move to the next chapter, to the yeah. next segment here. And uh, as I can't wait for the Dodgers and the Yankees to play each other this year. That's one of the cool things this year is that all the teams will be playing each other. Well, that's right. They changed it all up. So, yeah. hey, And I can't wait for you guys I'll, to maybe play I'll against make a trip out to you. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be cool? And your buddy Dieter Rule, who plays the organ out here. Yep. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, all of you. That's good- another cool thing about the whole job. I'll just—I know you want to move on, but yeah. we do have a uh, like a Facebook closed group. All the uh, NHL and MLB organists, so we really all kind of know each other, and sometimes exchange stories. But it's—it's kind of neat to be part of that fraternity. 
Well, that's a small club and in a very elite club, no question about it. 30 Major League Baseball teams. I don't know how many hockey teams, but that's not very many organists around the country. No, and they don't all have them either. So Is that right? Oh, yeah. I'm blessed that I'm with two teams that have committed to keeping a live organ. Are there, and the fans here don't yeah, have like it. organs? I can't imagine. Either don't have one or they'll just use um, uh, recorded stuff. Oh, yeah. But that's that's not the same. Or actually, as I say, it is. It's always the same. You know, there's no <laughs> when they keep playing the same thing. It never it never has any emotion behind it Absolutely. or any musicality behind it. Well, I hope the t- teams don't give up the organ. By the way, I know I remember what I was going to ask you, Matt. You know our friend Matt Kaminsky, who plays the, for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Braves, and uh, he plays. He has walk up music for every player that he plays. Now, do you play the walk-up music, or do they play a song at Yankee Stadium? No, so so uh, no, the players want their own songs, and and that's it's kind of gotten crazy because now they'll they, if they're up three times, they'll have three different walk-up songs, you know. Oh, and sometimes we'll call up and change it in the middle of the game. That's how uh-huh. crazy this gets. However, what Matt does is unique in that he does his walk-up is for the visiting team. Oh yes. So then he finds like little funny things to play for that player. And some you know, of them are kind of dig at, digs at the players, aren't they? Yeah. So what he does is he gets the fans involved on Twitter and he'll put up the lineup and say, you got any suggestions for me? So he lets the fans kind of help on that end with it. And, and you know, he's gotten a couple of national mentions about some of the stuff he's done. I think one of the ones I remember – that made the cross country was Bryce Harper when he was going into his uh, free agent year. Uh-huh. Um, there was talk about him coming to the Yankees. So as he walked to the plate, he played New York, New York. But there was also talk about him going to the Chicago Cubs. So the next time he came up, he played the Go Cubs Go song. Oh, that's so, funny. You know, he does. Uh, he plays with them a little bit, and he gets a lot of mentions. So it works for him. That's fantastic. Do you play anything for the uh, visiting players? Nope, we don't do anything when any visitors are up. How about uh, what you must play Frankie Valley on on occasion? Oh yeah, oh for sure. During um, well, so during about an hour before game time, I get about fifteen twenty minutes to play, and uh, you'll usually find one of his songs in in one of those sets. I have sets, so I have about a hundred sets already ready to go, um, and um, I end each half inning. Uh, with you know, maybe an eight to ten second snippet of something, uh-huh. and you might find something in there too. So, and I, they use it on the, the DJs play it quite a bit too. So, oh, yeah, uh, walk like a man like is one eight, that's I I've heard at games a lot. Oh yeah, walk like a man. They do that, but they do eighties in the eighth uh, every every game. So, oh, cool, yeah, it's right in his wheelhouse. So, <laughs> I play a bunch of his stuff there. Well, listen, my friend, thanks again for coming on Jam and Java. God's big blessings to you, brother, and go Yankees, go Dodgers. All right, brother. Be well. Thanks again. Anytime. All right. Thanks, my friend. Take I think care. we're gonna we're gonna move on to a baseball song. I think you probably played this song a few a thousand few times. times. Let's see if I can find it here. Take me out to the ball game. Here we go.
at the old bar game. So that is uh, probably inarguably the most famous baseball song of all time. And we did our version of it, that's for sure. And I'm really uh, happy with the way that that whole thing turned out. And Sarah did an amazing job on that video. Very poignant. All those cool pictures of the old players and everything. So that was a lot of fun talking to our buddy, Paul Cartier. Now, I had mentioned how to how Paul was so gracious to allow me to play the mighty Hammond organ at Yankee stadium. And I have a video that captured that whole little trip. It was, uh, my buddy Ray Negron from the Yankees connected me with Paul and the two of them kind of, we put together that little trip to New York city. We played a wild weekend in New York and, uh, this kind of, uh, captures, this goes back a few years before the pandemic uh, but check this out.
So that was, I think it said 20, 2019, right. And so uh, I see some questions up here. Let me see if I can answer some of the questions. Who is the guitarist in the soundtrack? So that video was, uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, Jam and Java history lesson. Uh, Jam and Java, before it became this video podcast every Monday night, was a Monday night jam session that I had at my church. Uh, Trinity Lutheran Church, and we started that in around 2013 until the pandemic. And every Monday night, uh, we had a little coffee shop, coffee house vibe, uh, uh, where my brother Rex and I played, and we had uh, Craig Pilo was the main drummer for a long time, and then Burley Drummond did it for a long time, and different drummers, Russ McKinnon and Russ... uh, Miller and a bunch of great drummers came in and played, and Rex, and then different, um, different, uh, um, different musicians would come in and sit in and jam. And uh, yeah, bar, uh, Senior B says uh, you're talking to Alex. Yeah, and Alex would come and sing, and different singers. Sarah would come and sing. Andrea Hammond, uh, different instrumentalists. Jerry Vavino. Uh, and guys would come in and sit in. It was very loose. It was basically a jam session, a two-hour jam session. And uh, and that track that you were listening to was uh, just a live recording of uh, of an arrangement I have of Can't Take My Eyes Off You, which I'm going to have to, after listening to that, that's something I've been planning on doing. I'm going to have to definitely uh, record that version that arrangement of can't take my eyes off you that instrumental version so the band that you were listening to on that uh jam session from trinity lutheran church was me on the hammond b3 my brother rex robinson on bass uh craig pilo was the drummer fino roverato was the guitar player um i think that's all that was on there yeah fino is the guy out here that i work with a lot a lot a lot a lot so uh, we're going to stay in a little bit of music stuff here. Should we get into the – yeah, let us do one more thing because um, – no, let's get into uh, – let's get into Robbie's records because a lot has been going on this week. Here's uh, – well, here's – let's see here. Um, we finally have a website. Oh, I, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of get that together. I'm going to play a video before, but uh, uh, here is – this is last – this was uh, February 12th, so that's two weeks ago that was released. Uh, he's the Light, He's the Lamb, and that's been doing great. And um, here, let me go over to this one. And here's where it's at at this point. No, that's not it. That's not it. Okay. How about over here? There we go. He's the Light, He's the Lamb. We've got 27,667 views on YouTube so far. So that's in two weeks, and uh, that is really, really good. Thank you all for all your support on that one. What else we got? This is uh, right now where we're standing uh, we have, let's see, the views, the overall views on YouTube were 4.8 million, 4.4 4, million, 850 some thousand. So we should be up to 5 million maybe by next Monday, hopefully and prayerfully. And this is, this is the big, this is the one that's been moving the fastest. That song, All That Matters, that I did with my grandkids, 457,000 views and I can't remember when that was released. Let's see if I've got a release date on that here. Uh, that was released December the 9th. So it will be three months, uh, half a million in three months. That's amazing, actually, to me. So, but here is a new interesting thing. Well, I'm our next release, I'm putting together, uh, I am putting together, a um a release schedule for Robbie's records here. Let me go back over to here. Is this what I want? Yeah. Things are moving a little slow tonight. I mean my brain is. There that's gonna be the next release. We are going to release this 
two weeks from tonight. And um, this is uh, There Is Joy uh, featuring Sarah Nimitz, but uh, we've got even more interesting stuff. I'm going to play a song first. Uh, let's see. What, I'm going to play this video. Let me back up a second. I was, um, and then we'll come back to this. I'm going to go over here to, there we go. Um, Marty Brenneman Roast was uh, this Saturday night, and uh, there was a bunch of people that were part of it, Bob Costas and a whole bunch of uh, people, especially Cincinnati people, and uh, I was honored to be included. He asked me to do something, and so I sent in this video and I thought I would share it with you. This is this is very Dodger ye Reds. Of course, Marty Brenneman, if you don't know Marty Brenneman, is my dear friend who's from Cincinnati. He was the uh, announcer for the Cincinnati Reds for 46 years. 46 years. Same number of, that I've been with Frankie Valley, interestingly enough. And... Um, he was there with a big red machine and through all those great years and the Dodgers and the Reds had a big baseball rivalry, particularly in the seventies. And so, uh, this was a roast and it was a benefit. And, um, for, let me see who this is again. Let me get this, make sure I don't get it right. Benefiting Maddie's House, a mental health hangout for young adults. Yeah, Marty and Joe. Yes, so you know Joe Nuxall. So uh, I, uh, since I couldn't be there, I was would have loved to have gone into Cincinnati Saturday, but I just my schedule wouldn't allow for it. But uh, so I sent this in, and they played this at the event, and so uh, here it is. Check this out. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. We're Jim Couch, Marty Brenneman back at Dodger Stadium as the Reds send Duval Suarez and Shebler up. Now the stretch and the pitch. And the foul ball back. I want to say hello to a good friend of mine, the musical director for Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, Robbie Robertson, who is a huge baseball fan. His home is here in Los Angeles. He's currently on tour with with Frankie Valley, but he is such a big baseball fan. So, Robbie, we appreciate your tuning us in. We hope your Dodgers go down in flames here on this Sunday afternoon before the Reds head on to San Diego. As Marty just mentioned, I'm the musical director for Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, and oh, what a night it is! <laughs> I've been with Frankie Valley now for 46 years, and Marty, you were with the Reds for 46 years. Marty and I share that incredible milestone of 46 years of dedication to our passions. We both have that in common. We also both love music, and we both love baseball. But he, of course, loves the Reds, and I bleed Dodger blue, as you can see right here. I'm the biggest Dodger fan you ever met. Marty Brenneman, you may be a legend in Cincinnati, but to many Dodger fans, you were just a guy who talked too much while we were trying to enjoy Dodger dogs. <laughs> but to be real, when you were broadcasting Dodger games, I listened to your feed wherever I was in the country, on tour, wherever. You are a master at the microphone, my friend. I love you, baby. Of course, we had some great rivalries with Tommy Lasorda's Dodgers and that big red machine back in the good old days in the 70s. One of my favorite stories of those days was when Tommy Lasorda went to church with John McNamara, who was then the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. They were walking out of the church together, and John tells Tommy to wait for him outside. So Tommy's waiting outside, but it's been a while, and so he decides to see what McNamara is doing. So he was lighting a candle. So Tommy went and lit a candle as well. 
So later in the game, there's an argument at home plate. Tommy comes out. John McNamara comes out. They both get to the plate. The Dodgers are killing the Reds 13 to 2. And Mac is very perplexed. He says to Tommy, this is one day I really thought we would beat you. Tommy then says back to John McNamara, I know all about it, Mac, but it's not going to work. I blew the candle out. Oh, what a rivalry it was. Of course, now that the Dodgers have signed practically everybody in baseball, I don't know if that rivalry will ever be the same. Marty Brenneman, you were there for so many decades, so many highlights. Of course, you started your career off right at the top with that iconic call of Hank Aaron tying the Babes home run record. Outfield shaded around toward left for Aaron. Dillingham with a pause, the 3 1 pitch. Swung on, long shot into deep left field. Rose is back, and that ball is gone. A home run. Could you have even dreamed? of what you were getting yourself into. Perfect Games, World Series, The Big Red Machine, and of course your partner, your buddy, Joe Nuxhall. They say Marty and Joe were the dynamic duo of broadcasting, but maybe it's more like the odd couple. Joe was the heart. Marty, well, let's just say he had a face for radio. <laughs> Oh, what a ride. Then capping it off by being enshrined in Cooperstown. And I know who loves you, baby. Cincinnati does. You'll always be the big man in town. But we love you in L.A. also, Marty. Baseball fans everywhere love you, my friend. And I know what it's like to walk like a man, you know. But when I hang out with you in Cincinnati, I get to see what it feels like to walk on water. You, brother. And let's talk home run. Grand Slam, you found your MVP in Amanda. Now that you've hung up your microphone, I am thrilled to see you two kids running around the globe and enjoying your life. It's safe to say, Marty, you were the voice of summer for Reds fans, while Frankie Valli's voice echoed through the seasons. But hey, Marty, I guess we both know a thing or two about creating lasting memories. Whether it's cheering our favorite teams or harmonizing to can't take my eyes off you for the umpteenth time. So my friend, here's to 46 years of unforgettable moments and to incredible journeys ahead for you and Amanda. Cheers, my friend. Tonight, this one doesn't belong to the Reds. May I say, this one belongs to Marty. So, uh, there you have it. That was uh, for his roast. Uh, which was uh, all the proceeds went to charity. And I hear it was a great turnout, all kinds of cool people. And uh, he called me Sunday morning uh, right after, while I was still in church, actually, and uh, and thanked me for that. So that was kind of fun. Um, so now let's move to, move out of baseball a minute and move to um, Robbie's Records. We have a new website. The new website, of course, it's the same web address. It's robbiesrecords.com. Let me see if I've got that over here. Uh, do I have a logo for that right here? Okay, robbiesrecords.com. So, and I invite you and encourage you to go check it out. And as a matter of fact, we can check it out together. I'm going to try this. This is something I haven't really done is share screen kind of stuff. And let me see if this is going to work for us here. If I go to this one, okay, move this one over here. This is the new website. Turn this off. And um, I used a, I've been trying to figure out the best mailing service because we've got an email list now that we got started and um uh and i think we sent out some emails today for the first one 
time for people who signed up for the email list. So last Monday, if you signed up, uh, let me know if you got your email. Uh, it's just a welcoming email. But, oh, cool, Senior B just signed up. And uh, so here is the website. I'm uh, I'm online here now on uh, Chrome, Google Chrome here, and this is – so I'll just kind of talk you through it. So this is it's at robbiesrecords.com, as you can see. And uh, this right here uh, are all of the – oh, Tom, good. You got the, your uh, email. Good. I'm glad. Oh, good, Myrna. Great. I'm glad. Okay, Anna, I don't think I have your – now, some of you people might have sent in an email a while back, and if so, maybe that's not in the in this new list. So if you don't mind sending a new list, if you want to get signed up to robbiesrecords.com, just either go on this website, sign up on here, or send me an email to robbie at robbiesrecords.com. So... This again is the website here. Let me, I'll show you so you can, oh, here, right on the front page, there's a, join our mailing list for the latest news, sign up. And if you sign up for that, you will let, you'll get a free download of the latest song. Oh, good, Anna, great. Uh, and uh, the latest song, which is um, uh, He's the Light, He's the Lamb, and you'll get that MP3. So here's the front headline. You see all of these are the 20 songs that are on Robbie's records now. And what I can do is you can click on any of these links, for example. Let's see, and go to All That Matters. And then there we are at, at the All for... Sure. Oh, I don't want to finish that. Oops. Is this going to work? I hope so. Here we go. Well... This may be a problem. Okay, well, we'll see. So, well, let me back up. Here are here's the front page with all the so the latest releases with he's the light, he's a lamb, all that matters, tell it to the rain. For example, if we want to go to all that matters, I would hope potentially click on this. Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. And um, and it tells it was released December 9th. Dive into the heartwarming sounds of family and faith with all that matters, blah blah, and all that stuff. Then if you click on the on the image here, it will take you to the landing page, which will go to all of the various all of the various um, streaming services. Let's see if I go back here. I'll get back. Now this is the first time I've shared a screen live, so I just uh, may want to make sure I don't turn something off that's going to shut down the program. You so you can click on the uh, on the image or you can click down here where the button that says streaming services it will take you to that same place. We'll see that that's that's not good. Let me get this guy out of here. Uh, I wonder if I can, well I'm accidentally hitting the streaming thing and I don't want to do that. Let's go back over here. Okay, there. So that's so basically bottom line is this will take you to all around the whole website and you can see the latest releases cover songs knock three times peppermint twist right i write the songs lent and easter songs and this is a definitely a good place to go baseball songs center field will to win and take me out to the ball game hammond organ jazz route 66 and what me worry by the way what me worry is the biggest View, I think 750,000 views on that one. Faith-based songs, his words from this moment on, give it some thought. Songs for Christmas. Then we've got store and stream. So we, you can go to the Robbie's Record Store from here, right? And this, you can see uh, all the stuff that we've got on there. You've got the cruising CD that you can order or t-shirts cruising with Sarah and Robbie's t-shirt, Robbie's records, mug, Robbie's records, hat, Robbie's records, t-shirt, Robinson brothers, EPs, sound of Christmas t-shirt. So, uh, that's, so all of this is available. And then also also on here, you can see, uh, this is for the YouTube page. It's working. 
There's Robbie's Robbie Robinson YouTube. Uh, you can go to the Apple Music link there. Or you can go to Spotify right there. So so we have this website. Before I had Robbie'sRecords.com was one page on my website. So now it's got its own website and the email list and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this will help be more functional and um and then we also have the newest song that's going to be released in two weeks. And then after that, I'm going to get on a really specific uh, schedule. We're going to release three songs a week at a time. Let's see here. I'm going to go to where is the There is Joy. That is going to be the next release. And there it is. To be released March 11th, 2024. Sarah's emotive voice soars over Robbie's uplifting orchestrations. And if you click on the all streaming services here, uh, you can see there it is. And that's the landing page. And if you go to the Spotify, now here's the thing you guys could really help me out to do and it won't cost you a penny. Um, and that is if you go on here to the Spotify pre-save, it's going to be released two weeks from tonight on jam and Java. And uh, from what I understand, Via the algorithm, which is everything these days, the algorithm rules, I guess, the whole streaming world. Um, if you have a lot of pre-saves, so the first day when it goes live, if there's a lot of pre-saves, that helps the algorithm is what I've been told. So if you go in there and pre-save it, again, it doesn't cost you anything, and then you'll get a free download. And by the way, if you go on my website, I'll set it up in the next couple of days, tomorrow or the next day, where you can get an MP3 of that song ahead of time. But, uh, and then in a couple weeks we'll release it. So, so that's the Robbie's records and that's the latest stuff that's going on there. And, um, so thanks again for all of your support, all of your help. And that's, uh, that's what's going on. And we've got a mailing list now, so you'll be getting emails from me on a regular basis, newsletters and new releases and, and all that kind of stuff. So let's see if I go back over here. We're going to take that down. There you, there I am. Okay. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make sure I quit Chrome. Okay, good. Hopefully it doesn't quit the program. Okay, good. So, and it's easy to find because it's Robbie, Robbie'sRecords.com. No apostrophe, of course. Um. So there you have it. That's all that kind of stuff. Let's go back to some music here. We are in the season of Lent, um, and uh, one of the songs that that uh, is going to be a release sometime here before Easter is, um, well, actually, let me, I've got a different idea. Let's do this. Easter is about a month away, and uh, a few, a little bit more than that, I think, and um at Trinity Lutheran Church, we have a very unique and joyous and celebratory Easter service. And one of the traditions that we've developed there over the last few years is we have a red sousaphone play with us. Uh, my buddy Robbie Hioki, who's a great uh, trombonist, brass player, tr tuba player, he plays with... Um, the Brian Setzer Orchestra for the last 25 years. But he comes and plays Easter with us. We always have a great brass section. Uh, and uh, so if you're home on Easter, but I encourage you to be in church on Easter. But our service, we're having three services. And if you're anywhere close, hey, Brother Vinny. Hey, Brother. Um, Vince Martell from Vanilla Fudge. Okay, Vinny, what I'm telling them, now, I'm going to show you guys our last year Easter service, one of the songs from our Easter service. Uh, this is an old gospel church song called Praise Him, and uh, you'll get a taste of what it's like at Trinity Lutheran Church on, on Easter morning. And it goes like this. Sing with us as we praise the King of Kings. It goes... Praise Him. Sing out. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise 
So that was last Easter Sunday, and uh, what happens at our church then is uh, we have four services. We have 6 a.m. Andrea and I uh, do the music for a service that actually in the garden. Uh, it's We have a biblical garden that is just fantastic. Um, so 6 a.m. we have a sunrise service outside there in the garden, which is really a glorious service. 8 o'clock we have... Um, our, then our second service at 10 o'clock, we have a service in 12 o'clock. I think it's 8 o'clock is the contemporary service. 10 o'clock is a blended service with a with um, choir and handbell choir and 
church organ and the band and the brass and the whole thing. Andrea Hammond, by the way, uh, not only is part of the praise team, uh, she is the choir director as well. And then at 10 o'clock, we have a a blended service that has both. And then uh, 12 o'clock, we have a traditional service with the brass and organ and uh, choir and handbells and all that kind of stuff. So four services. Of course, we have services on Wednesday, Holy Week. Every Wednesday, uh, you can go on our website right here, Trinity Lutheran, you can see all the service. But we have Holy Week. We have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. And uh, so it's a busy, busy week that, of course, for all church musicians. Uh, now, I have a song that uh, Andrea and I did together. It's called Lord of Life. And as we're in this Lenten season, um, I think, and uh, now last week I played the song uh, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And then this week, I, uh, uh, the week before, I played uh, Go to Dark Gethsemane. And um, I thought this week in for a Lenten type of a song, a song that's called Lord of Life that I did with Andrea Hammond. And this song is actually um, a song that we're going to be releasing sometime here in the next few weeks, before Easter. I'm going to get this out there uh, before Easter. Let's see if I can find it now, of course. That's always the trick, it seems, these days. Um, and it's really a, it's a very powerful song. Um, uh, Andre, I can't remember if it was Andre and I wrote this or if it was just me. I can't remember that, but this is called Lord of Life. And to me, this is kind of the heart of what the Lenten season is all about. Jesus is Lord. Uh, one of the great lines is, uh, on the cross of death bring, oh gosh, I can't remember the line now. <laughs> Here, just listen. Here it is.
life so nothing can separate us amen and the cross of death became the tree of life that's the line in that song that is so profound i think um so that is going to be one of the releases we're going to put out here in the next few weeks two weeks from tonight though we're going to have the release for um for uh uh what is this (laughs) Oh, Lord, too much music, too little time here. Um, what is the name of that song? I guess I'll remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it's definitely one of those. Yeah, that was a great performance by Andrea. And Michael Crosby, never seen a red horn like that. Yes, that is, thank you, Senior B, there is joy. Uh and uh, yeah, we on that going back to the song, the praise him at Easter sing, uh, that's um, that red sousaphone. Thank you, Vinny. You know, Vinny Martell, who's uh, here and he, he, and he and he watches regularly and we so appreciate you. Vinny is one of my heroes. I mean, big time heroes because he changed my musical world when I watched those guys back in 1968. I saw them in concert. And uh, they changed my musical world, Vanilla Fudge, one of the greatest bands of all time, and they still sound fantastic, absolutely amazing. And uh, one of the highlights of my life was uh, when Vinny and his bandmates uh, allowed me to sit in with them, and uh, we did that at the Wildly Theater in Edwardsville, Illinois, and uh, I have a video of that because uh i was so thankful we captured that on video and uh vinny i want to thank you so much for doing that but i'll play that little clip of us this is back in august of last year when i said well no i think it was earlier than that maybe june or july but i sat in with you guys and uh here's a clip of that
right. Yeah, that was uh, that was a memory I'll always have sitting in with you guys, Vinny. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for making that happen. And then when we played together, Vinny and I just definitely connected. And um, and then I, when we put together the Route 66 Get Your Kicks tour, I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if Vinny would come and play guitar? And so I called Vinny, and he was agreeable to that. And uh, we had an, an epic tour last October, and we're going to get ready to do that again Um at the end of October this year, if we can put it all together, still putting all the nuts and bolts together. So that's going to be super, super duper exciting. Of course, our next gig with Frankie Valley is going to be at Radio City Music Hall on March 22nd. And I guess it would, I have to play a Frankie Valley song. Um, here is, uh, here's, here's a, from, uh, oh, about a month ago or something like this, or a few weeks ago maybe a little over a month. This is us down in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, one of the singers, this is one of the, our, we have a new singer this year. His, um, his name is Justin Rodriguez, and he's really good. He's the first, well, you'll hear him sing. He's the first one. He sings the first verse of Oh, What a Night. Here, check this out. <laughs> no, that is not the right one. Okay. What is this? Let me get into here. Um, Charlotte's 70th birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Happy birthday to Charlotte. Oh, gosh, still a kid, Charlotte. Yeah, let me, I'm going to start this again. Um, so I want to tell you the singer who sings the very first verse, he's the new singer in our band. His name is Justin Rodriguez. So check this out. Here it is. Oh, what a night.
Thanks, everyone. Hey, how about our singers here? Aaron Alexander. Justin Rodriguez. Ronan Gay. And Craig Cavey. Come on, let's give it up one time. Yeah. Let's also have an eight round of applause for our local horn players here. These, are guys, these guys are hometown guys, our trombone player and our trumpet player. So come on, let's give it up. <laughs> on the alto sax and the flute and the tambourine and the shaker. The one and only Rick Keller, yeah! <laughs> Our drummer, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Sinisi. <laughs> On the bass, Alfredo Lopez. <laughs> On guitar, Basil Fung. <laughs> also on guitar, Carmen Grillo. <laughs> and of course, our musical director and arranger. This guy and I have been working together for a few years. He's one of my closest friends. <coughs> uh. <laughs> <coughs> and one of the most talented musical people I've ever worked with. Ladies and gentlemen, our musical director and arranger, Robbie Robinson. Excuse me while I take a little break here. <laughs> oh, what a night. So that's a taste of what a Frankie Valley concert is like. My daughter made had a cake made that said, Frankie says you are too good to be true. 70 looks good on you. Good. Oh, that's cool, Charlotte. Yes. Can't take my eyes off of you. Um, so uh, let's see here. Well, so Robbie's records, that to me is the big thing this week for me in terms of um, uh, all what's going on here. If you go to that new website, you can check out all the new songs. Hopefully it's got a lot more information. And uh, the really cool thing is if you go, um, uh, go and you get the free download, download, if you so download if you sign up for the um, uh, the mailing list, get on the mailing list, and then also, why can't I can I can never remember that song? There is joy. I don't know why it just doesn't seem to ring. Maybe the maybe the title need to be rewritten, but whatever. whatever. The newest release is going to be two weeks from tonight, called "There Is Joy," and then after that, we're going to be releasing two at least two a month, if not more per month. Um. And uh, let's see what time. Oh, it's time for me to play another song. We're going to play one more song before we call it a night here. This is um, this is a um, a song that I wrote called. Well, it's kind of in the in the style of Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons, and it was kind of inspired by Who Loves You. And by the way, two days. Um, would have been the birthday for Don Ciccone. Don Ciccone was one of the four se the seventies four seasons who did Who Loves You, who did Oh What a Night. And when I joined in seventy eight, well he wasn't in the band, but then he came back in eighty and he was with us for a few years and we worked together. And uh you know what? I don't think I have a picture of Don and I together. And we did so many gigs together and we used to do a lot of sessions together. Yeah, Don Ciccone, and before he was in the Four Seasons, Don Ciccone was um, the lead singer and the songwriter for a band called The Critters, and they had a song called Mr. Dyingly Sad, which was a big hit, and Don had sung that. But that's Don singing. Well, in that live album that we did in 1981, he's in that and uh, sang a couple lead songs. Um what was that song? We used to do a song in the middle of the show, and he used to sing it. It's uh, Silver Star, I think it was, or but there was another one. And uh, but Don played rhythm guitar. He played bass on Oh What a Night, and he passed away 
a number of years ago. Uh, he was 70 years old, but uh, he would have been seven. He was 70 when he passed away. He was he would have been 77 in two days, and so uh, my heart goes out to his family. Uh, I met his um, his son came to a show a couple years ago, Darcy Sacconi, and he was a and his son is a bass player. And then he also had a daughter, and I'm trying, her name is escaping me. So, uh, again, my sympathies, my prayers go out to his family. We miss Don Ciccone. Um And that, whole, that week, Don Ciccone passed away, and so did Jerry Corbetta, who had been our keyboard player for many uh, years. And um, so we miss them. But So this song, I digress, this song, oh, Slip Away, yes, that was the song. And we used to do that live in the show, and Don sang that, Slip Away. Definitely miss him. And I would come out on that one, and I played a little melodica into the microphone and played a little melodica solo in the middle of Slip Away. Um, so this song is inspired, like I was saying before I got off the track, inspired by the song Who Loves You. And it's a song, uh, well, this is the Trinity Praise Team. I'm kind of looking for it as I chatter here. Um, and uh, this is, uh, let's see here. Where it is. Oh, and this is called Remember Who. Now, you think of who loves you. So it was inspired. I don't think musically it was any kind of a ripoff in any way, but you can hear the inspiration, I think. So check this out. This is Remember Who. Remember Who. That's a good thought to uh, go out with is remember Jesus because he remembers you. Amen. So uh, I will see you all next Monday. Thanks for spending some of your time with me tonight on Jam and Java. I'm very appreciative, and I never take for granted that you guys take your 
time, your precious time, and spend it with me. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for the, the all that. God's big blessings to each and every one of you. I will see you next Monday uh, on Jam and Java, 7 p.m. See you all there. God's big blessings. Bye-bye. Jesus is the light The light shines in the darkness All around the world For everyone to see Jesus is the people